Hello, welcome all entire Africa. Welcome, Jumbo, uh, to everybody watching the program. I'm Josue Bolowa. Welcome to the show. So I'm so delighted to be part of you. I'm also I'd like to thank every people, all the viewers around the world watching this program at uh, www.congodialogue.com. Uh, I'm Joshua Bolowal International. So today we'd like to make an English version talking about the news, actuality, what's happening here in South Africa, Africa and around the world. All right. So today I'm always delighted and honored to welcome and to receive the president, Jemadari uh, uh, Kilele, here in South Africa. With him, we are going to discuss about all this information. He has received also some of the SMSs and questions, but we'd like to get out with him so that he can answer to you what's happening in South Africa, what's happening in DRC Congo, what's also happening in uh, Africa. All right. So, without any further delay, I thank uh, Papa Jamari behind the camera. I also thank the, our coordinator, Mama Francine Gembe. Huh? Big shout out to you. Let's go to the guest of the day. Welcome, Mr. Kilele. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the welcoming. How are you doing? I'm pretty well. Uh, I'm fine. I'm fine. All right. I've received a call. You also received the same call for a person, uh, one of the viewers around the world. I don't know where you, he called us from. Unfortunately, he did introduce himself saying that uh, Mr. Pril Kilele, we watch your videos, we watch your show talking about Paul Kagame, talking about uh, Tuti and Hutu, you are against them. But before we go to the point, let's talk about the DRC first of all and the President uh, Joseph Kabila. We've, we've been told that uh, he made a trip to Zambia and unfortunately on the, road, on the, road, on the way he had an accident. Uh, can you tell us about first of all the purpose of this trip to Zambia? And what's happening if you got more information about uh, Joseph Kabila trip in Zambia? Thank you. Hello, Africa. Uh, it is a duty for all Africans to tell the truth about their governances and about their leaders. I know there is a French proverb which says, La vérité n'est pas, toute la vérité n'est pas bonne à dire. It means we can't tell all the truth. Mm -hmm. But for those who believe in the Bible and in the Quran, mm -hmm. there are passages which, says, which say, uh, freedom will liberate people. Yeah. I mean, uh, truth, truth will liberate people. So it is our bounden duty to tell the truth, come what may. And uh, there are conflicts in Africa, recurrent conflicts, because people are not informed and they are uh, misled mm -hmm. by leaders who think they are the only authorized people to tell the truth, even if what they are telling the population is lie. Mm -hmm. And Africa has been managed all along through and by lies. Uh, few leaders assumed what they said to the population, but the majority are actors to lie. So it is our constitutional right to tell the truth. As regard the guy you call President Kabila, uh, who is no longer a president, is actually an outlaw what we call in French, la loi. He's an outlaw guy who should be apprehended and uh, tried, I mean judged, and jailed about his trip to Zambia. I'm not the one who caused the accident. An accident is an event which occurred unplanned. Yeah, it is an unplanned event. But when we have to interpret it, people will talk about mysticism, people will talk about witchcraft, will talk about the mistake of the drivers, etc., etc. In its context, well, one of the two or three that I've said can be applied. Maybe it is mysticism, which made that he had an accident because 
in in uh, in 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 one month this guy has had three consecutive accidents so it really raises questions exclamation marks and you name it but such uh, being we should answer the question we ask what was he coming to do in Zambia yeah. and this is a message which I direct to President Edgar Lungu of Zambia that he must pay attention mm -hmm. to Tutsi I'm talking about a tribe in 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 Africa called the Tutsi. The Tutsi inhabit Rwanda and Burundi. And they spread all over with their exile. You can find them in Tanzania, Burundi, Kenya, Uganda, Somalia, and you can find them everywhere because they spread everywhere in the world. But the part where they inhabit is Rwanda and Burundi. Mr. Lungu, President Lungu, we know that the fake Joseph Kabila, whose real name is Hippolyte Kajambere Kanambe. I don't know if he introduced to you as Hippolyte Kajambere Kanambe. That is his name, not Joseph Kabila. He's in trouble in Congo and internationally. Those who were supporting him we are told and we know little by little are abandoning him. So he came to Zambia to sign military agreement with you, uh, Mr. Edgar Lungu, so that you could send a military force to Congo and protect him and protect the interest of many accomplices who have been terrorizing Congolese people. Because his power is drawing to an end and the power of some of those who were supporting him has come to an end. The fake Joseph Kabila need more support reason why he came to you to give him soldiers and I know we are told we are well informed that the training has started of Zambian military that you want to send to DRC to go and protect Hippolyte Kajambere Kanambe and the interest of people who don't like Congo this is an advice from me uh, Mr. President Edgar Lungu. Avoid being enticed by the fake Joseph Kabila. He has drawn in his game him and Paul Kagame, many people who are looting Congo. We know Zambia as a peaceful country. We share borders as well as tribes. We have some tribes which are in Congo. You found them as well in Zambia. We even share names and surnames. I would advise you to remain as peaceful country as you, you've been. Nobody knows Zambians as warriors like us Congolese people. For your information, Congo has been at war since 1482 when Portuguese stepped onto Congolese soil. And from that time up to today, if you read history very well, Congo has been fighting for its sovereignty, for its freedom. We know it is a mammoth task, but you as president of, of Zambia don't send your compatriot to go to die in Congo because we will kill them. You don't know warcraft, you Zambians. You are maize farmers. 
you are farmers. But apart from that, you've got a good football team. That's all what we know of you. You don't know war. It is us who are warriors. And those bandits from Rwanda who are coming to lie to you. Yeah, you will propose money to pay your soldiers. But they will die for nothing. And I am asking the Zambian military to refuse to go to Congo. We are brothers and sisters. Don't go to kill your brothers and sisters. Our forefathers, our ancestors in Africa fought against colonialism, imperialism, and all the evils to give freedom to Africa and to Africans. We must promote Pan-Africanism in a good way, economically, socially, academically, and not igniting conflict among us because you want money. Zambia has got to what we call copper field. The copper that we, are, we have I mean, in Congo extend under the soil of Zambia as well. So it can make you live. Don't rush for diamond or for gold that we find in Congo. You want to give a bad send-off to your compatriot who will be killed in Congo. So refrain from sending them to Congo. Kabila is lying to you. Don't accept the money that he is proposing to you. And he's lucky enough because he didn't die in that accident. He came out unhurt, but our prayer and our wish would be that he died in that accident. And probably he's going to die in, in another accident. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. President, uh, Professor Kilele. I'm with him today at this uh, stage. We are discussing about uh, Africa's news and uh, DRC, first of all. So by talking about uh, the trip of uh, you call him, you are calling so-called the fake president. Um, you also mentioned about uh, Paul Kagame, all right, because it's like they are working together. But before you go to Paul Kagame, the question might be now, since he is called outgoing president or outlaw president, what makes him to resist up until today? Because actually the mandate has been finished since uh, 2016 and the election is supposed to be uh, done uh, last year. But unfortunately, we've heard that uh, it's been postponed until this year, the 23rd of December 2018. Number one, he's supposed to step down. Why he cannot step down? What should be done to him, Mr. Pre Mr. Kilele? It is not him who is refusing to step down. But he's the president. Well, he was the president. He is no longer a president because his mandate has expired. And uh, as we put it, he is an outlaw who deserves nothing better than arrest. He should be arrested in a serious country. It's a guy who should be manhandled, mm -hmm. put in prison, and judged for violating the constitution. But how come up until today is not nothing has been done? Yeah, as I'm saying, it is not him who is refusing to step down. Okay. Uh, there are two things. Well, the first thing is that Congo is the kingdom of milk and honey. Mm -hmm. When you test, when you step into Congo, mm -hmm. we used to say, you enter OK, but you come out KO. You get me? You are knocked out. Mm -hmm. When you enter, you are OK upstairs in Congo. Mm -hmm. When you want to come out, you are knocked out. You are KO, knocked out, because of the fabulous wealth found in Congo, which people don't have in their country. Yeah. So this is a little boy 
who grew up in Tanzania in total and abject poverty. He was a shoe cobbler. He was a roadside mechanic until he got it. And he was a taxi driver in Tanzania. He was even driving some Congolese musicians who were coming for concert in Tanzania. We don't want to quote their names, but it is known worldwide. And he got a chance to be selected by good destiny, maybe. Enter the military of Rwanda. He was a bodyguard of Paul Kagame. And then <coughs> today, he's the president. It life. Yeah. He was a president. Mm -hmm. But it is not him who is refusing to step out. Point number two is that he is a prisoner mm -hmm. of the international scavengers that we call international community yeah. who are holding him uh, as a prisoner. He is in their custody because up to now they are fishing around trying to find another stooge that they can use to become a president and defend their interest in Congo. So as long as they've been fishing and they are not finding anybody capable, mm -hmm. so he's there and they are still giving him time to extend his mandate mm -hmm. uh, to be what you call president. So he's a prisoner of the international scavenger. Mm -hmm. um, in passage, I must talk about a colored guy called M Moise Katumbi, yeah. the owner, the president of a, a football club in Congo, the mighty Tupu Samazembe. He's uh, probably the alternative candidate, the international community, is dicing up on the board to try to uh, replace Ippolit Kajambe Kanambe, fake Joseph Kabila. Unfortunately, that guy doesn't have charisma and is uneducated, just like Joseph Kabila. Because Joseph Kabila is uneducated. He went to school up to grade three. Moses Katombe, the same thing up to grade four. Now they want to put Moise Katumbi as a president to impose him on Congo and Congolese people. Yet this guy is not a Congolese citizen. It is not because he owns a very strong soccer team uh, which has been a are winning a lot of trophies in Africa that he deserves to be a president in Congo. Number one, this guy is not a Congolese citizen. Uh, Moise Katumbi is by birth a Zambian citizen and a Jew at the same time. The father was a Jew who immigrated to Congo after the Second World War after Hitler massacred Jews in Europe. And he came, uh, a fraction of, of Jews migrated to Congo. Mm -hmm. Now, he had workers, because mm -hmm. he was in a fishing business, in fishery. Yeah. And he had a domestic worker who was a Zambian lady. That Jew had sex with his domestic worker mm -hmm. who was a Zambian and gave birth to Moise Katumbi. So Moise Katumbi doesn't have Congolese blood. Whatever shit he can talk in international media mm -hmm. that he want to come back to Congo, his country, he is not a Congolese mm -hmm. a citizen. He is another guy that we must arrest, judge, and uh, possibly executed for hijacking the Congolese citizenship and being a wealth smuggler when he was a governor mm -hmm. of Katanga province in the south of Congo. So Congo hasn't been having very good chance to have 
uh, its real and authentic nationals to preside over the destiny of the country. Uh, starting from uh, the late President Kasavubu, uh, Mobutu, any time a real Congolese was uh, emerging to govern the country, it was killed. Mm -hmm. You have seen Petrus Lumumba was killed. That was a pure Congolese. Loren Kabila, the same. Now they bring a fake individual, mm -hmm. uneducated and stupid, Joseph Kabila, to be the president. And now they want to bring uh, Moise Katumbi, who is a mineral smuggler who has looted the Katanga province and whose wife is a Rwandan, is a Tutsi, the international community want to impose him on Congolese citizens. We are against it and we will not allow it. We want to lead our own, on our own countries, our own country as it is done everywhere. So Moise Katumbi has no chance to be president. We will make a war against him. We will make a war against him. So you do, ha do you have any comments? Numbers will be on our screen. So keep in touch with us. Facebook, Joseph Boloa. You know, uh, President uh, uh, Kilele's number will be also appear on your screen. Mr. Kilele, just before we go to another question, let's open a bracket. But question might be asked now, what can we do or what should Congolese might do to, to avoid this... Uh, damage or disaster cause one after another you guys are having a president which is not a citizen of the country and you guys are tolerated or as we said they've been imposed to whoever is anything you guys can do at the moment because we are going to what December time for coming election if we will have election everyone who reads history knows very well that uh, Congo was taken as a private property of the Belgian king, Leopold II. But Leopold II was a poor man, even though he was a monarch in Europe. And he was not really a Belgian citizen. He descended from Germany. He was a German. To get Congo, the mission of exploration that is sent was financed by 15 countries. Mm -hmm. And America was the first country to recognize Congo as a state belonging to King Leopold II. It is not at this place where I will enumerate all the other 14 countries. Mm -hmm. Just for your intelligence, you should know after exploring Congo and finding that Congo mm -hmm. was what we call geological scandal, mm -hmm. those countries signed an eternal agreement that they will never allow a non, I mean, uh, 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 an indigenous citizen mm -hmm. to rule Congo. They should always do or maneuver mm -hmm. to bring outsiders that they impose to come and rule over Congo through a uh, malicious way. Mm -hmm. So it is a little bit difficult because there are superpowers who are holding Congo tight mm -hmm. and who do all the level best not to leave Congo free. What to do? Mm -hmm. I am not uh, a fatalist. We will continue to fight. Mm -hmm. We have been negotiating with these people. I wonder why do they have this insatiable greed which prevent them from uh, dealing with us directly, but they prefer to go behind our back mm -hmm. and find uh, criminals like Kagame mm -hmm. and many African countries which are praying on a DRC mm -hmm. and who claim to be real Africans but who are not promoting pan Africanist mm -hmm. I mean pan Africanism. It is a shame for African countries that we know of uh, who are making wealth by 
stealing, looting Congo wealth, mm -hmm. yet they just a bunch of hypocrites, thieves and murderers. Mm -hmm. That's what they are. Congo will continue to fight through diplomacy, mm -hmm. though it is tough because it is not us mm -hmm. uh, who are ruling the country for the moment. Mm -hmm. We are occupied by multinational forces, yeah. disguising under peacekeepers, but they are business organizations and criminals unethical who came to terrorize Congo and Congolese people. It's a little bit uh, uh, disgracing and very shameful to to see and to hear and to watch that it's a great country like a GRC and being manipulated, be uh, looted, uh, being destroyed while the population is still crying in, in a high level of poverty. Uh, education, you can't even talk about it. Medicine, you can't even talk about economics. is one of the poorest country. Why we call it a rich country, but in practice, it's one of the poorest country. You know, the reason why Congolese all over the world are spreading out to look for refuge, to look for exit, to look for exile. You know, to look for a better life out there while they leave their minerals and riches and wealth that we do have in DRC. It's so unfortunate. That brings me to ask you, Mr. Kilele, about uh, United Nations uh, that are still in mission for, I don't know, past 10 or 12 or 15 years, even 20 years they've been there. We do call them the, peace the peacekeepers. So what they're really doing after all happening in DRC? They're doing something, but not peacekeeping. <laughs> Meaning? <laughs> they are looting. They are under covers and the covering the looting of the country. They are promoting the demographic depopulation of Congolese people. They are encouraging rapes, theft, and the shaming of Congo. We actually do not need the United Nations troops in Congo. As you say, for the past 17 or 20 years, they have been in Congo, and they are acclaimed as the biggest United Nations missions in the world. It's a lie, because they're not achieving anything. News across the world are showing mass killing of the population people by, first of all, Rwandan troops, Ugandans, and Burundians. Mm -hmm. And secondly, by stupid Congolese soldiers and uh, policemen with, who are utilized, forced, I can say, uh, forced by the current government to kill their own compatriots. And this in the presence of the United Nations troops. Mm -hmm. If really they were sent to Congo to maintain peace and security of the people mm -hmm. and their assets, they wouldn't have left mm -hmm. the police or the military mm -hmm. to kill unarmed and innocent and impoverished citizens. Mm -hmm. The fact that people are being killed all the time and they are there, mm -hmm. it means their mission in Congo is a flop mm -hmm. and they have to leave. Unfortunately, we don't have a strong parliament. The, problem, we, 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 the parliament that we have is not our parliament. Yeah. Uh, in other countries, this would be the duty of the parliament yeah. to demand mm -hmm. their immediate removal and departure mm -hmm. from our country. We got a very bad souvenir of these thieves from United Nations, mm -hmm. from the country where they recruit them. Many are recruited from poor countries like Bangladesh, mm -hmm. like Pakistan, countries, India, where you find people catching mice 
they send them as soldiers, they become general in our country. But when you go to India, some of them are in, in the caste of, of poor people who are eating lizard and, and, and mice. They come to our country, they become generals and general majors. These people in 1960 were there. 60, 61 were there. It was the, actually the first United Nations missions in the world in history. Our former prime prime minister, Patrice Emery Lumumba, mm -hmm. was killed in Congo while they were there. So what is the, the raison d'etre to come to our country? They are just being imposed to help looters to loot our country. They're not doing anything. Uh, the parliament that we have is a parliament of adventurers. You find people who are not Congolese who are fooling at parliament. Unemployed people picked up from anywhere, they come there, they become Congolese. And in the parliament, they don't defend anything. Mm -hmm. They go to parliament, by 10 o'clock you see them on the street, in beer halls, drinking, being in hotels with ladies, that all. And earning fabulous salaries, six, seven thousand dollars while teachers are not getting paid, while medical doctors are not being paid, while there is no circulation of money. But they cover the looting, the shaming, the humiliation of Congo and Congolese people. If a nationalistic government would come to power, we would ask for the removal of United Nations troops and probably to pull out from the United Nations. Because it has never helped us, mm -hmm. the United Nations, as well as the African Union. Mm -hmm. Many Africans are in Congo, among the 52 nations which sent troops to Congo. These are Africans who should promote Pan-Africanism, love among us. Mm -hmm. But many of us, envious and jealous, mm -hmm. like the sheet of Kagame, they are there to loot Congo. Yet we are all Africans, and through bilateral agreement, we could have exploited our resources and developed our continent through some bilateral and multilateral agreement. But they, they have accepted to enter agreement with devils and to shame their own African brothers and sisters. What if what is the raison d'etre of being member of the African Union, member of the United Nations, if those organizations are not promoting humanity, are not uh, uh, respecting human dignity, are not promoting the welfare of uh, at, at the universal level? Mm -hmm. Why should they be happy with mass killing, poverty of other populations? It is a shame for Africa, and another will the so-called white man mm -hmm. respect us when you see an African killing another African. Mm -hmm. So, should, as I, I'm repeating, a nationalistic government come to power, we will pull out of the African Union as well as the United Nations, because those organizations are criminal organizations. So their presence in DRC is really useless? Pointless. Mr. President uh, Kilele, about there is a match is going to be organized on the 25th of February this year, um, led by uh, the Catholic uh, priests, Catholic Church, all those ways they are making to free the country, to push um, the president in power to go away to step down. Do you think, Mr. Mr. Kilele, the organization of marching? around the city, around the country, is going to be fair and convinced the presidents in power to step down? Well, marching is uh, what we can call democratic, democratic expression of uh, a country's citizen, citizens. It is one of the ways to put uh, a pressure on the regime in place. It is one of the way. And we have seen that everywhere in the world. Uh, since time immemorial, people have been marching uh, 
to express their rejection of the government or the method of working of the government. Mm -hmm. But in a, an occupied country like Congo, uh, one should doubt whether it is genuine, whether it is not a manipulation by the government in place. Mm -hmm. But still we can give them uh, credit of doubt. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is genuine, it is really being organized by the Catholic Church, as you said. Yeah. We support what the Church is doing. But historically, if we have to go back where church comes from and where uh, African colonies or African continent come from, historically, mm -hmm. we wouldn't believe in the deeds of a church, mostly Catholic church, mm -hmm. Christian church. Uh, these people are the epitome of hypocrisy in the world. I am born and baptized Catholic. I am educated partly uh, by Catholic. Mm -hmm. And still I can sing those beautiful hymns we used to sing the time we were little kids in schools of Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. I do respect them. But you know, as I was saying historically, if Africa has been colonized, it was by the decree of the Vatican. If, I, if my memory is still a sharp, it was probably in January 524 or in January 454, I am a little bit introverting the figures. Mm -hmm. It was in the 15th century okay. when, no, in, in the 5th century, excuse me, mm -hmm. when one of the Vatican Pope, I forget the name, but um, it will come maybe along the time, signed a decree which we call in French La Bulle de Pape. Mm -hmm. He signed a decree instructing or ordering the King of Portugal, mm -hmm. Alfonso, I think, the fourth, mm -hmm. to send explorers colonialists to go into Africa mm -hmm. and colonize Africa and kill Africans and destroy kingdoms and empires, mm -hmm. loot Africa, destroy their cultures. It is in the archive historically. Mm -hmm. It is a Roman pope who permitted the colonization of Africa and the looting of African uh, people and their culture. So how on earth, mm -hmm. after so many centuries, these people can come and tell us they are for and with the people? This is a scandalous hypocrisy. All along for the past 20 years since Rwanda has been in Congo, the Catholic Church didn't see that Congolese people have been murdered daily, have been impoverished and dispossessed of their land. Mm -hmm. Where was the Catholic Church? Where were these priests who want to give us a last minute lessons that they love us? We don't need them. They are accomplices to evil which has been happening in Congo. I mean, you are not... Uh okay with the march the catholic organizing to support no i said i support it is one of the methods yeah but you're wondering how catholic they're behind them of course because these are the people who allowed this criminal of kanambe to prolong 
uh, an extra time mandate because when they had a conference at what they call the conference of Senko, mm -hmm. through a dubious agreement, they're the one who said, okay, right, we give you one year. That was 2017. In December, all right, uh, 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 elections should be organized. Yeah. They are the ones. They are the one who, the ones who were chairing mm -hmm. the conferences, and it was not for nothing. Truly, money was given to them. Yeah. They were not working for nothing because they claim to be uh, God's people who, who work for nothing. So by receiving money, they it can't decide corruption. It was a corruption, and they are the one who allowed him to continue ruling Congo. So, you, you do you think that the Catholic Church they got the power to say no to the president uh, Kabila to or to leave, or they can say yes, stay there, or they can no? This is the time to step down. Do, well, do you I think th they have the power? Well, I think apart from uh, faith mission, mm -hmm. churches have got a humanitarian mission. Mm -hmm. They really must be close to the people because they have the people in their churches mm. and they wouldn't allow criminals to joke with the church members. They would be at the forefront, mm -hmm. the vanguard of revolution because they need what they call their sheep because they call uh, believers they are the sheep of God. Mm. Just get that name sheep, it means stupid. The people who don't believe, who don't think, human being are sheep. Ironically, everybody who goes to church is a sheep. Is stupid, you see, a little lamb who has no brain. So they claim to be uh, 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 the farmers, uh, shepherd who look after us, the sheep. Now, if you are a shepherd, would you like somebody to come and and kill and snatch and ill treat? Your sheep, no. you would fight, be it a snake, be it uh, uh, another animal, a fox which attacks your 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 herd. You must fight it. Yeah. But these people have been there, enjoying life in a convent. Uh, yeah, that's what they do, and claiming that they are holy, they don't have any any feeling uh, that we sinners uh, have. For them, they have hijacked the moral role of blaming people uh, they educate us they talk about their god etc so catholic people should have been there since a long time and defend they should not say church for church politics for politics because whosoever does church religious uh, task is a politician and the politician work together with the church it is proven through history so it's what we call in French a masquerade, you it's know, they're trying to... A masquerade. Mm, yeah. So I don't believe, I think they are sending people, they are sacrificing people. Okay. Catholic Church is sacrificing people. Because you cannot send people into the street who are unarmed, knowing that there is a fully armed military and police, yeah. which doesn't hesitate to use real bullet. To disperse, to kill. The, the, the intention is not to disperse. It's not to, to scare people. The intention is to kill people. Now, knowing that you've got side forces who, which are trigger happy, mm -hmm. you wouldn't tell people descend in, in, the, uh, in the street against the regime. If I were the Catholic Church, because Catholic Church has got plenty of money in the world, probably it is the first richest organization in the world. I would have bought weapons, mm -hmm. armed the population to fight the occupant. Therefore, Mikilela will go back to church and become the real believer. Yo, hey, <laughs> thank you so much for still connected to our YouTube channel, Congo Dialogue, you know, our website at www.congodialogue.com. So you're more than welcome to post your questions, to post your views or no, 
if you are for or you are against what Mr. Kilele has been raising throughout the show, you are more than welcome. Numbers are on the screen. Mr. Kilele goes step by step to the end of our show. But before that, there is a live video or one of our episodes, uh, one of the, the viewers who watch you. We spoke about the appointment of uh, Mr. Paul Kagame in power as a president of uh, African Union. And apparently, uh, when they watch your video, they say you like seems like you've been against that appointment according to you according to your view according to your opinion don't you do you think uh, uh mr paul kagam is not fitted to be a president of uh, african union or do you have something against mr paul kagam yeah, i've got something against him and he is not fit to be a president how come he's been elected no he was not elected he was appointed through corruption because, as I put it earlier, yeah. many African countries are envious and jealous of Congo. Mm -hmm. They are afraid should Congo wake up, Congo will crush most of them. Mm He's -hmm. not fit. You know, to manage a country, you must have some managerial qualities. Yeah. If the only quality that a leader has is that of killing people, therefore, someone is not fit. Are you going to rule over uh, an empty land, empty country? No, you can't. You can't. Mm -hmm. You need people to work. You need people to push the economy forward. Mm -hmm. You need uh, people to fill up all the spaces of the land, not massacring them. This guy has got only one skill, that of killing people. That is what he knows, to kill people. And this has been proven worldwide. It is not only Kilele uh, who says it. And uh, the viewer who raised this, maybe he doesn't know, but this is in, in, in media, that Kagame is a killer. Books have been published. Uh, warrant, almost 24 warrant of arrest have been issued by the French judge, I think, Brigot. Mm -hmm. And more are yet to come against Kagame. It is not only Kilele. So I think wherever he is, Kagame is haunted by Kilele's face. But here I am. If you are in the bedroom, you are watching me, here I am. Turn, turn. Maybe you are sleeping. Turn. Kilele is here. And I will haunt you everywhere. You are a killer and you are not fit to rule Rwanda. You are not fit to rule the African Union because anyone who must be African president must be the beauty of Africa in everything. Have good virtue, have moral, have love the people, have the negotiation skill, not tyranny, not jealousy, because Mr. Kagame is a jealous person. Really? Mr. Kagame is envious person. He is not satisfied with his tiny Rwanda. Huh? Rwanda being a frog, it wants to swallow an elephant like DRC. But the throat will burst and he will die. Mm -hmm. DRC is an elephant. His, his dream is to be the president of Congo, as he is for the moment. But at least he's doing it in hiding. He, he would be more satisfied to be in Kinshasa and to show the world that the real Hitler is here. But you know, uh, President Donald Trump is right when he called African countries that shit as all country. I mean countries. He is right. Our continent is an continent, an asshole continent, where whatever occurs, how can leaders of our continent elect a criminal to represent us? What will Kagame go to say outside? Fortunately, African Union is a club of mafiazo. What, what do they go to do 
whenever they go to to South Ethiopia America, or to yeah, many yeah. many summit, what do they discuss? Otherwise, Africa would have been developed since a long time. Look, this shame. African Union at 80 or 90 percent is financed by the European Union, but Africa is the continent mm -hmm. which is feeding Europe. There wouldn't be Europe without Africa. They come to steal in Africa, mm -hmm. to be what they are in Europe and in America. How do you understand that? Europeans are financing African Union. So whatever decision Africans can take, it is dictated by European mm -hmm. unions. Mm -hmm. These leaders go to this summit all the time to discuss what? Because there is nothing tangible which comes out of these discussions. They end up taking champagne, sleeping in cozy hotel rooms mm -hmm. with young women, that all? Why can they discuss the question of Congo? Congo is an African country. In the central, in the central it is the heart beating of Africa, which Franz Fano, the writer, said the trigger of Africa is in Congo, and Congo is the trigger of Africa. Once that one is touched, things will work. If you don't touch it, things won't work. Congo has got all what can develop Africa without going to the World Bank, going to the uh, International Monetary Fund. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of going through bilateral negotiations, love, pan-Africanism, mm -hmm. and you, you get what you need. Instead of going through backyard, hiring a criminal who is heartless, mm -hmm. a person like Kagame, who triggered the genocide in Rwanda, killing more than 800,000 people in Rwanda, Tutsi and Hutu included. It is known. It is not a secret. And we should talk about it instead of graduating him as the, the African president. What does he know in Africa, apart from killing people? The time he was in Uganda uh, and, and, and Tanzania in exile. Mr. Is, Mr. Mr. Kilele, those people who appointed him, don't you know that they know that... that they are accomplices. These are people who are envious of Congo. Envious and jealous and they are shameless. And they don't deserve to be called Africans. As Africans, we have got a mission. We are the same people. You see? And it is a shame to see that we don't love one another. I come to South Africa, South Africa might say, call me, I'm a query query. Yet, when you hear South Africans speaking, 80 to 70 percent of the languages, the vocabulary is found, is found in, in Congolese languages, mm -hmm. is found in Zimbabwe, is found in Lesotho, in Botswana, in Zambia. Mm -hmm. It's found in Tanzania. All the same vocabularies. And we have got scholars, and we have got leaders, but who continue inheriting those frontiers which were drawn by the white men. To dis we are unable to create harmony and peace. And we start attacking one another, hence poverty, has rented our area. It's supposed to be done. Problem. We got a really problem. I know that this topic we won't uh, end it today. So we'd like also your participation if you want to be part of the show. So you are more than welcome. Our numbers on the screen. If you want to discuss more about how to develop this Africa, you know, and how to can be developed as African. So you are more than welcome. I think this thing has been told a long time ago. Years, centuries after centuries, but unfortunately things are going from bad to worst. Before we end our show, we want to talk about Tutis, because apparently they start off uh, the Great Lake of Regions, uh, the east of Africa, somewhere there up there. Uh, territories has been robbed, Mr. Kilele have been looted, and people are complaining about uh, people called Tuti coming from Rwanda. Tell me, is this group of people called Tutsi, are there really a problem to DRC, this nowadays? There have been a problem in Africa. But before I tackle that question, mm. let me extend on the African incapacity uh, to be Africans. Colonel Muhammad Gaddafi is murdered by uh, the Western countries. There hasn't been any African country which protested when Gaddafi Libya was attacked. 
None mm. of these leaders who go to uh, you, uh, uh, African Union mm -hmm. summit condemned the killing of Gaddafi. But Gaddafi has been injecting money into many liberation movements in Africa, given whatever they spoke about him, dictator, whatever you call, but Gaddafi has been pumping money in many countries in Africa. He has been building hotels, he has been uh, promoting agriculture, he, has, he bought even this, a satellite, mm -hmm. telecommunication satellite mm -hmm. for Africa, and a lot of things which million people know. Mm -hmm. None of these leaders condemned they kept on saying a dictator has been killed. Look the stupidity of us Africans. But when a Western leader dies like that, you won't see people uh, insulting him, Some mocking People are sympathizing him. with him. You won't. It is only us Africans. They are happy. They forget the good that Muhammad Gaddafi has done. And we know countries where his millions have been starched. Mm. Now, coming to this uh, bullshit people that you call Tutsi. Are they? They are shit. How? I got a book, a collection of books called the Congo Kitabo, written in the 30s, 1930s. An American guy wrote the book, and when you read somewhere, probably page 289, it says this. The Tutsi are the most confident people in Central Africa and probably the world's greatest liars. You understand that? Mm -hmm. That was in 1934. I've got the book. Okay, you carry on after this, Mr. Kilele. Furthermore, apart from that book, there is another book which was written by a German writer called Richard, Richard Kant. Maybe I'm badly pronouncing the name, kind of candid. The book, I got it at home, it's entitled Caput Nili. It's Latin, Caput Nili, in which it discusses the behavior, the manipulation, the sociological fabrics of a people called Tutsi. In that book, there is a philosophy by the Tutsi, which is coined and embodied in a word called Ubuenge. Me, I'm a Mulega. As I said, we are the same people. As the Balega, we say Buenge. Buenge means ruse or cunningness. But us, they don't teach us to lie. The Tutsi teach their children from younghood mm -hmm. up to a certain age. They tell them, you must lie. Don't tell the truth to anybody who is not your parent. You must always lie to anybody who comes an outsider. You must have boinge. You must have the cunningness. Mm -hmm. And this is in all the Tutsi people. Now, to come to you, viewers. In 1996, I, Jemadari Vibikil Kilele, I battled it out in many media here in South Africa at SABC with the Tutsi. And at that time, people, South African people who didn't know the Tutsi, some of them considered me being crazy or tribalistic. 
But I kept on informing people about the danger that the Tutsi represent in Africa and in the world. At the time, Kagame sent his soldiers here, political soldiers in South Africa to come and mislead South African opinion mm -hmm. and people. We had a guy called Thomas Nzirantima. Another one was called, and still they are there, Bizima Karaha. But for your information, use of Africans and uh, the world, these people practice some surgical operation on their names to hide their true identity. Hence, Bizima Kara is not Bizima Kara. His full name is Bizimana Karaha Muetu. That is his name. He chopped it, and here is called Bizima Kara. So that it could be closer to Congolese names. Thomas Nzirantimana. His name is Thomas Nzirantima. He cut the na. He becomes Thomas Nzirantima. And there are many of them who are like that. Mm -hmm. Wherever they go in the world, they say they are Congolese people. They claim to be Congolese people. They say they are the most intelligent. They are the one who built Congo. They are this, 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 and that. But if you are intelligent and you are the most competent, you must build, first of all, your own country. They came to mislead South Africans here that they are the Banyamulenge. And videos of my interviews are still foundable in SABC archives where I fought these people. But because of money, mm -hmm. people stomached whatever bullshit they were talking on television. Bizima Karaham Wetu, you are not a Congolese citizen. Thomas Nzirantimana, you are not a Congolese citizen. Deogratius Bugera, you are not a Congolese citizen. Joseph Fake Kabila, you are not a Congolese citizen. Azarias Ruberwa, you are not a Congolese citizen. And the chain is very long. All of you are Tutsi and Rwandan citizens who come from a poor country which has nothing, which has no beauty. The only mineral that you have got is a lie and pretension. Everywhere you go, you claim to be Congolese. You are not Congolese citizens. You are Africans. If you don't want to be Africans, then go to Israel because you say you come from Israel. You are Tutsi, a very heinous tribe which has got a Machiavellian plan to create a Tutsi Hima empire in Africa. Because of your, th your, your thirst of power, your greed of power, you went into exile because you always think and want to rule. Only you want to rule in Rwanda, in Burundi. Only you. You don't want any other tribe to rule. Yet, in both Rwanda and Burundi, there are three tribes. There are Hutu, Tutsi and the Batwa. The Batwa are the pygmy. Actually, the Batwa are the owner of the country. And then the Hutu. Hutu were the Bantu. You are the Nilotic. You came from Ethiopia, coming down as a cattle herders and came to settle in Rwanda. I don't discriminate against that because Always there has been a movement of population yeah. in the world. But once we settled, we identified ourselves 
into or uh, with a certain portion of land. In Congo, we don't have a tribe called the Banyamulenge. It doesn't exist and it will never exist in Congo. There is no tribe in Congo whose name starts with Banya. It doesn't exist. We have got Ba, which is, which represent and signify a plural. For example, Muntu, which means a human being, Bantu, which means human beings. We don't say Banyabantu, it doesn't exist in Congo. We have got Luba and the Baluba. We don't have Banyaluba. So where did you coin this name of Banya, Banyamulengi? It doesn't exist, be it in Swahili, in Mashi, in Kirega, in no language in Congo where we find Banya. If it is children of Kilele, we say Bana Kilele. And when you go to the Arab and to the Jew, they have got this particle of word, bin and ben. I would be called Jemadari bin Kilele or Jemadari ben Kilele, which means Jemadari fis or child of Kilele. When you go in Arabic, you go in, in, in Hebrew, you will find yeah. that. So, us, in our languages, we say bana Kilele and not banya Kilele. We say banya, ba, bana Kilele, not banya Kilele. So, you missed it there. Mm -hmm. My fellow African continent, South Africans, this is a message to you. Rise up. We are all Africans. Pay attention to Tutsi from Rwanda. They are liars and they are thieves. Their job is to infiltrate people's tribes, people's organization, and to disguise themselves what they are not. So one day in South Africa, we will have Banyamulenge <laughs> or Banyakwerekwere, uh, Banyagrigamba. We will find them here. There will be a new tribe in South Africa. South Africa wake up and pay attention to Rwandans. They are liars, they are flatterers. They have infiltrated United Nations organizations as Congolese. And it is where they defeated us. Call that politics, but we're waking up. But Congo has educated many people. Wherever they go, these people claim that they are highly educated than Congolese people. But these people are educated thanks to Congolese money. Most of them went to our schools and were financed by our bursaries. We were and still are more hospitable as the African beating heart, us Congolese. Mm. The late Rwandan president, Juvenal Abiyarimana, studied in Congo at Al-Fajiri College and at the University of Kinshasa. The former Ethiopian dictator Mengistu Aile Marian studied in Congo, did economy in Congo. Mm. Olden Roberto, the Angolan, was in exile in Congo for years. The late president of Angola was as well in Congo. Savimbi stayed in Congo for many years. Even the Congo Brazzaville president, Denis Sasungwesu, was in Congo. 
we have accommodated many Africans because of our Africanity and Pan-Africanity. Today we are victim of the hospitality that we have shown to Africans. And we have been attacked for that weaknesses of being a Muntu because the Bantu somewhere are naive. Mr. Paul Kagame, I am warning you again to pull out from Congo. You are not eternal. You are immortal. And your policy has put many Rwandans in danger. We have been living with you peacefully. We have accommodated you in our country. And we knew and know you as Rwandans. We can't lose track of you. No matter how long a tree or a log or a timber will lay into river, it will never turn into a fish or a crocodile. It will still remain a tree. If you go into a foreign country, respect that country's laws. Don't disregard and minimize the law. Mr. Paul Kagame and the fake and stupid Joseph Kabila, you have violated Congolese territory and you deserve nothing better than being arrested, judged, and probably executed because you are proven terrorist. Anything you want to add or questions you do have to ask? Numbers on the screen. That brings us to the end of our discussion with uh, the President of the National Congolese Party, Mr. Kilele, he and South African Johannesburg. I thank all of you for your support, all of you for your SMSs, all of you for your questions. I believe that uh, we'd like to bring again, again uh, Mr. Kilele in our studio to discuss more. However, if you've got some questions, do not hesitate. President Kilele, thank you so much for your time. Thank much you. appreciated. Thank you for shedding light onto many hidden issues and for educating African folks. We are all Africans and we will remain Africans. President Mandela suffered for Africa. Petrus Lumumba suffered for Africa. Hamed Sekuture suffered for Africa. Muammar Gaddafi died for Africa. President Robert Mugabe fought for Africa. Jomo Kenyatta suffered for Africa. Gamal Abdel El Nasser suffered for Africa. And there are many more Africans, African leaders that I can't quote here, who taught us to be united. And here I quote the famous Jamaican singer, Robert Nesta, Bob Marley, with his song, African Unite. Let us be united. All right, let us be united. Thank you so much. On behalf of the whole team, Congo Dialogue, we would like also to present our condolences to uh, Morgan Shangarai, his family, and the political party as well, our whole entire uh, Zimbabwe are supporting this uh, number one leader of uh, Zimbabwe who, who passed on here in South Africa in Johannesburg. Obviously, the body was already uh, deported to Zimbabwe. Obviously, during this week, he's going to be buried. All our condolences to all the entire family and those who are close and those who are far from uh, Morgan Shangarai who passed away with uh, he was battering with a cancer so we say thank you to you and until next time I, Joshua Boloa, YouTube Joshua Boloa, I mean Facebook Joshua Boloa YouTube Congo Dialogue, we meet again bye Thank you.